We're back with question six. This gives us a piecewise function and they say determine if the limit exists as x approach one and determine if f is continuous at x equal one. So to evaluate the limit, if the limit exists so for part one, for part one, the limit exists if the left hand limit equal to the right hand limit. So we need to check out if the limit from the left which is a limit from one from the negative sign of f of x. The limit from the left is going to be the limit as x approaches one of two x plus three. We we'll plug in one, we get two times one is two, and two plus three is five, so that is five. Now the limit as x approach one from the right of f of x, that's going to be the limit as x approaches one of the function from the right is when x is greater than one, that is x squared over x minus one. Now to evaluate this limit, this is going to be the limit as x approaches one of x squared minus one over x minus one. Remember that x squared minus one over x minus one. x squared minus one is a difference of two squared. This is x minus one times x plus one. x minus one cancel x minus one. So this is just asking us to evaluate the limit of x plus one, put in the one, one plus one is two. Now look at that, five don't equal to two. So the limit as x approaches one from the left of f of x is not equal to the limit as x approaches one from the right of f of x. And so we can say, therefore, the limit does not exist. So the limit does not exist at x equal one. That's five marks. We don't do nothing and that's five marks. The limit does not exist at x equal one. Let's check out the second part. Determine if f is continuous at x equal two. Now it can't be continuous. Now since the limit does not exist, part two, now the limit does not exist at x equal one. Hence, f is not continuous. Hence, the function can't be continuous at that point. So it is not continuous. So determine if the limit exists. No, don't exist. Is f continuous? No. Two of them is no. No and no. Part B says the parametric equation of the curve is given by x is equal to five cos theta. And they tell us y is equal to 2 sine theta. Now we need to find dy by dx. So to find dy by dx, dy by dx, this is a C-sec admat question. Using chain rule, it's dy by something times something dx. The only thing it can be is d theta. So it's dy by d theta. So we differentiate y with respect to theta from here. So dy by d theta would be when you differentiate sine, you get cos. That's two cos theta. So this is going to be two cos theta multiplied by d theta by dx. Well, we have x is five cos theta. So to find d theta by dx, when you differentiate cos, you get minus sine. So it's going to be one over, when you differentiate x, we get minus five sine theta. So dy by dx is going to be two cos theta over minus five sine theta, but cos over sine is cut. So that's negative two over five. 
cut theta. That's the answer. Negative 4 over 5, cut theta. That's 4 minus. Alright, the next part of the question, it says, given, so then tell you part C, given the integral from 1 to 4 of f of x, dx, the tell you that is 10 over 3, and also the integral from 1 to 2 of f of x, dx is 2. Now, before we go any further and look at what the question is, first thing we need to look at carefully is this is from 1 to 4. Now, what do we know? Now, remember this. The integral from 1 to 4 of f of x dx, that's the same as the integral from 1 to 2, yeah, of f of x dx. We can go from 1 to 2. So we'll pick it up from 2 to 4. Now the integral from 1 to 4 of f of x is 10 over 3. That's 10 over 3. So now the integral from 1 to 2 of f of x dx, that's 2, plus the integral from 2 to 4 of f of x dx. So if you bring this over here, 2 is really, you see this number 2 here, so? 2 is really 6 over 3. 2 is 6 over 3. So if I bring over here, I'm saying that 4 over 3, that's the integral from 2 to 4 of f of x dx. So the integral from 2 to 4 is f of x, of f of x dx is 4 over 3. So now we can compute this. So the question wants us to evaluate the integral from 2 to 4 of f of x plus g of x. This is what we need to do. But well, what is g of x? The question tells us g of x. And I write down g of x somewhere. G of x is root x. So if I were to just put it here, g of x is the square root of x. So now this right here is equal to the integral from 2 to 4 of f of x. That is 4 over 3 plus the integral from 2 to 4 of root x, which is g of x, but root x is what? x to the half. So what we end up get is 4 over 3 plus when you integrate x to the half, remember x to the half is root x, x to the half is root x. So when we integrate x to the half, we get x to the 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2. Add 1 to the power, divide by the power, I will integrate from 2 to 4. So if we want to continue, this is working out to be 4 over 3 plus, this can be rewritten, well let's just put it in our calculator, put in the 4 there, 4 raised to the 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2. That part is 5 and 1 over 3. So it's 5 and 1 over 3, which is 16 over 3 minus. When I put in 2 now, 2 raised to the 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2. Two cube square rooted that is root eight. Huh, it's giving me some decimal, so I won't be able to write it that way. I'm gonna have to put it in perfect form. Two cube square rooted is root eight. So this is square root, this is giving me two over three times the square root of eight. That's what it's giving me. Now the square root of eight is what? The square root of 8, I can simplify it, that's root 4, let's simplify it. This is the answer by the way, we're just simplifying. Root 8, if I remember that is root 4 times root 2, but 
I'm just breaking down the root 8. That's root 4 times root 2. And the root of 4 is 2. So that's 2 root 2. So root 8 is 2 root 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So I can write this as 4 over 3 root 2. That's the answer. Not going to try to simplify. I'm just going to leave it at that. Or maybe you can leave it as 20 over 3 minus 4 over 3 root 2. So that's how I'd leave the answer. How much mark can do for this? Please don't it. That's too much marks for this. Oh, it's four marks. Makes sense. Four marks. Part 1, they tell us that solve the differential equation dy by dx is equal to sine x over sine y. And they tell us this occurs when x equal 0 and y equal pi by 2. So first thing is we need to cross multiply to get sine y times dx, dy is equal to cross multiply sine x times dx. Now all we have to do now is integrate both sides. Now when you integrate sine, you get negative cos, so we get minus cos y is equal to an integrate sine, we get negative cos x plus some constant c. Now look at this, now we need to put in at zero, so at 0, pi by 2. The cos of pi by 2, when you plug in pi by 2, the cos of pi by 2 is the cos of 90. The cos of 90 is 0. So we get 0 is equal to, the cos of 0 is 1, so we get minus 1 plus c. So therefore, c equal 1. Now, since our constant of integration is 1, that implies that the equation is negative cos y is equal to negative cos x plus 1. Now we can multiply through by negative 1 to say that the cos of y is equal to multiply through by negative 1, we get cos x minus 1. Then I can make y the subject now, and I end up get y is equal to cosine inverse of cos x minus 1. That is it. So that's why. Y is cos inverse of cos x minus 1. And they give 6 marks for this. A whole of 6. So y is equal to cos inverse of cos x minus 1. That's why it is the marker is down. There's only one more part to go. Cos inverse of cos x minus 1. All right, part two says determine the equation of the curve that passes through one five for which y equal to the integral of six x squared. Y. Is equal to the integral, marker is almost finished, the integral of six x squared. That is y. Y is the integral of six x squared. So if y is the integral of six x squared dx, to so integrate it, add 1 to the power 6x cubed, divide by the power of 3, plus some constant k, that is y. So y is equal to 6 over 3 is 2, that's 2x cubed plus k. But they tell us there is a point, there is a point that is 1, 5 that lies on the curve. So when y is 5, x is 1, so 2 times 1 cubed plus k, 2 times 1 cubed is 2, so that means 5 equal 2 plus k, so therefore k equal 3. Since k equal 3, then the curve y is given by 2x cubed plus 3. That's the answer. How much marks is this? 4 marks. Alright, so that takes care of it. y is 2x cubed plus 3. Integrate it. 
Six x cubed over three. Six over three is two. So that's it. Two x cubed plus three, and that takes care of the 20, 2021 paper. So this takes care of the 2021 paper. So guys, next year it's gonna be amazing. We're gonna have cartoon videos on the channel. We're gonna have cartoon videos explaining all the content. We're gonna go through a lot of worksheets on the whiteboard, all of that stuff. So if you're doing unit two, make sure to just subscribe to help the channel grow. And you can expect great things next year. We have a lot to explore for. You know, there are a lot in store, we're going to have a lot of fun with the mathematics and the lighting will be better, we're going to fix that next month and you can look forward to plenty of mathematics throughout the next school year so, take care, hope you're enjoying our summer stay safe, alright, stay COVID free keep on enjoying the summer and have a blessed day by the way, time to disappear again, I'm gone